and welcome to Conversations With. I'm your host, H. Lee Tony, Executive Director of the Miami-Dade College North Campus Carrie P. Meek Entrepreneurial Education Center. Each week we meet with another interesting guest involved in the world of entrepreneurship and I'm delighted to have with me someone I consider an old friend, mm -hmm. uh, Juan Casimiro from the Casimiro Global Foundation yes. and Seven Mindsets. Uh, Juan, welcome to Conversations Thank with. Thank you for having me. It's such a, an honor and pleasure to meet up with you again some absolutely. 12 years later. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so it's been a long time, but sure. as we had discussed before, I think uh, there's something that is afoot in mm -hmm. the environment in South Florida right absolutely. now around absolutely. entrepreneurship. So we'll talk a lot about that sure, today. Sure. Uh, but tell me about what you've been doing with the Casimiro Global Foundation. Sure. Uh, right around when we met about 12 years ago, my dad passed. And in order to fill that emotional void um, if you will, when you lose someone. Uh, I wanted to think of something real quick and improvise uh, something that honored him. Uh, so I created the Casimiro Global Foundation, which fosters some of the things he taught me uh, by example, uh, work ethics and, and so on. And then uh, I started to kind of brainstorm on creating a nonprofit and uh, it evolved to the Casimiro Global Foundation, which basically what we do, our motto is, you know, creating uh, the next generation of entrepreneurs, uh, innovators, and global leaders. And our mission is to foster entrepreneurship and development, uh, to help communities become more sustainable, help individuals become more entrepreneurial, and more innovative in the process uh, you know, as they go into entrepreneurship around the world. Well, absolutely. Well, that that is where our work mm -hmm. came together. We mm -hmm. were running the Institute for the Youth Entrepreneurship Program. We mm -hmm. just started that. Mm -hmm. You were doing work in that work also in that youth entrepreneurship absolutely. space, just starting out in South Florida. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me how your program, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on youth entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. How, does, how did it evolve? What, were, what are you doing? Sure. Uh, what are you seeing among mm -hmm. the young people who are interested in this? It, you know, that question goes back to about 25 years, 25 plus years in New York City when I started teaching entrepreneurship uh, through today what's known as the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Back then it was the National Foundation for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Where Nifty got started, I was already there opening up a school store. And this piqued uh, some interest in the founder, Steve Mariotti. And I think I was the second or third hire into Nifty. And when he saw that I was working with special ed students mm. and teaching them how to open up their own school store within the school with part of the proceeds going towards scholarship or towards their own business. Mind you, a population that has been sort of put aside. Absolutely. Special education students bring a certain element and creativity and innovation just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the beginning for me as far as uh, entrepreneurship with youth. Over the years, it evolved to not just in New York, not just in the United States. In this case, I've always had a passion to teach and empower others through entrepreneurship, leadership, innovation, and uh, global issues and tie it all together. Today it's now, uh, my experience is now in well over 30 countries in the past uh, 25 years. And um, I just keep pushing the agenda forward and fostering entrepreneurship globally. But what I have discovered over the last seven years that while all the, our institutions, including government, are pushing entrepreneurship on people or having people consider it, um, I always say we have to learn how to empower and make sure that those going into business have self-esteem, motivation, and that they know who they are first. And that's why we, you know, when my partners uh, in Atlanta uh, co-created a company called uh, Seven Mindsets, which focuses on self, personal growth, personal development. Then you go into a career called entrepreneurship or any career of choice when you're most confident, Absolutely. when you're most sure of yourself. I agree. And mm -hmm. those those concepts, those values, those kind of internal markers is where we like mm -hmm. to begin the conversation too. Absolutely. And that's a shift that I think is the next wave for mm -hmm. colleges and universities and high schools too because the focus of it, when you talk about entrepreneurship and educational setting, there's a focus on the business plan. Let's Correct. get them to the business plan. What's your idea? Let's write a business plan. Yes. But you are highlighting 
steps that come before the business plan. Let's create a life plan. Let's create and and yes. let's mm -hmm. deal with the mindset. That's what we do. That an entrepreneur an entrepreneur sure. has sure. before we get to the things that are basically Absolutely. management because yeah. the business idea starts way before yes. the yes. business plan. Is that what you focus on that's also in your program? That's pretty much what we focus on. Mm -hmm. So you've got two entities here. Um, you have seven mindsets which is a business that not only reaches young people through the seven mindsets, but we have seven mindsets academies in schools, teachers that we've trained who then talk about self-development with the young people. But let's empower the teachers. Let's make sure the teachers are empowered before they start becoming, you know, empowerees and so on. And then we have seven mindsets portal so that the students or the individuals who can't afford to wait for this at, to, at school, well, you can learn this at home. And we now have an app. We have portals. We've got web-based learning. We're creating distance learning. We have live training and so on. And the, the major emphasis for us as a co-founder, the, the four of us, it's all about empowering young people, the educator, parents and professionals. We got seven mindsets at work. What's key here is that we found is that when you are happiest in what you do, that whatever that is will become the best possible thing you could possibly do. I want and I wanna... a lot of people go into things because they're chasing the money, the opportunity, the convenience. Ultimately most employees when surveyed in America, something like 65, 70 percent of them when asked, are you happy at your job? Most say no. And this was based on the happiness research project that was conducted. You're right. So. You touch on two populations, teachers and parents. So I'm going to start with teachers. A big part of the One Community, One Goal mm -hmm. uh, work that kind of sets out the strategic economic agenda for Miami-Dade County talks about the need to train the trainer. And in mm -hmm. our settings, we're Absolutely. talking professors, and we really are talking about uh, moving beyond the places where people think entrepreneurship should happen, which mm -hmm. is largely in the business school, mm -hmm. which is great, but you know as well as I do, most entrepreneurs likely didn't come out of the business school. So <laughs> when we come back from our next break, we're going to pick up yeah. on uh, how we engage professors in this sure, work sure. and also the impact that this kind of work has on parents. So Absolutely. I hope you'll stay with us. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Juan Casimiro. Thank you. Cool programs for hot jobs. Let Miami-Dade College jumpstart your career. We offer bachelor's degrees in film and TV production, electronics engineering, supervision and management, and nursing. Or choose from 300 other programs. With our flexible course schedules, you can take classes during the day, evening, weekend, or online. For more info, visit mdc.edu or call 305-237-8888. Get the knowledge and training for today's in-demand jobs. Register now. Welcome back to Conversations With. I'm your host, H. Lee Tony of the Miami-Dade College North Campus Meek Entrepreneurial Education Center. And Juan Casimiro of the Casimiro Global Foundation is my guest today. Mm -hmm. And before we went to break, we were talking about engaging teachers, mm -hmm. engaging professors, and how entrepreneurship is really interdisciplinary. Yes. Are you finding that as well? And are you also finding that uh, teachers outside of the business realm are, are gravitating to the subject of entrepreneurship? You know, most recently I read an article, and this article talked about all of us have some level of entrepreneurship going way back when. As a matter of fact, I watched the, uh, the Shark Tank the other day, and the founder of FUBU talks about Certain communities with certain backgrounds had their hustle on. Right. I remember as a 10-year-old, I had a newspaper route. Mm -hmm. So back right. then, I was entre being an entrepreneur, but the word didn't really buzz that much. But I think that if we are going to move forward and do this at the optimal level, let's equip the educators. Let's teach them how to find that passion, whatever that skill set is that they have, and let's teach them how to exploit that energy and share that with the students. Let's empower them through the seven mindsets 
Then let's also talk about the best practices as to how they can share and transfer over that knowledge uh, for young entrepreneurs and so on. And I'm finding, yesterday I just had a conversation with all the chairs of Miami-Dade College uh, in Kendall, and I was an, uh, an invited guest to talk about, and I briefly mentioned that one of the things we do is Seven Mindset Teacher Training, mm -hmm. which we call Seven Mindsets University, right. where they become immersed with this whole you know, curriculum and movement, if you will. Uh, we want to be assured that the individuals that are receiving this feel confident enough to then you know, grow personally because when you are most motivated, happiest, you could do things better. Okay. And uh, we want to make sure that, that that energy is transferred over through entrepreneurship or any subject in this case. And that's why we put a lot of emphasis on training educators, training parents and training employees and corporate leaders as well through our model. Mm -hmm. Great. And parents, I, mm -hmm. I just hosted a technology-focused uh, mm -hmm. launching at the Entrepreneurial Center, and um, parents were involved. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was so moved by the unintended uh, consequence of parents being equally moved by mm -hmm. the opportunity that's being afforded their children. Absolutely. And I would imagine, and I, I know, that it's the same way mm -hmm. when they are made to be exposed and are and realize the mm -hmm. opportunities of teaching entrepreneurship, giving it equal status with any other career mm -hmm. pathway, and how much they hunger for mm -hmm. uh, the foundational lessons that you learn as you become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Would you agree? Absolutely. In, in both of the entities that I'm um, founder or co-founder of, at the end of the entrepreneurship camps, at the end of the Ultimate Life Summit, which we host at Disney every year, mm -hmm. uh, we get testimonies from parents. When the students go back to their countries or to their communities, you know, the parents contact us and say, what did you do? Uh, why is this kid on fire? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what happened that week? And oftentimes I get parents at the end at the award ceremony or the trade fairs that we do with young entrepreneurs. The parents often ask me, do you have this for us? You know, we want to learn, we want that energy and so on. So um, I, I like to hear that. I also like to share with the public that we have to reach both because they then become their own supporters mm -hmm. at home. Yes. And when you're re-emphasizing, -emphas re reinforcing what's being taught during the day at school, and that child then has somebody to speak to, uh, I think that's powerful. There's a major disconnect in education in general where the parents are speaking another language and the kids are speaking another language, and the educators trying their best to really reach the child, but there's no reinforcement or not enough reinforcement at home. So it's crucial to get parental involvement in everything that we do between the foundation programs and Seven Mindsets and the great work that you're doing. I mean, uh, we need more parent engagement. What I also find in my travels is very basic. Communities that have the most parental involvement at schools, there's no coincidence why they tend to be very successful communities. Absolutely. Exactly. It's no secret. Those communities with less parental involvement tend to have the higher social ills. And I see that time and time again, not only in the United States or in Miami, but around the world. And it has nothing to do with the poverty or the wealth of that community. It's parental engagement. And when we have both the parental engagement and meaning that the parents hold the educators and the school leaders responsible and accountable for successful education, then you're going to see better results. And it has nothing to do with economics. And uh, I really think that we need more of that. And you're championing that. That's great. Tell me about your global uh, activities. And when you put uh, American children in the room mm -hmm. with children from around the world, because I know sure. that your program a attracts a lot of international sure. interest. Yes. Uh, yes. And we may start this and have to finish it after our next break. But Absolutely. just quickly, what, what are you seeing and how are our children mm -hmm. faring on a global stage? Well, one of the books that I'm, I just initiated, you know, with, with one of the chapters that I that I'm putting together is what I'm seeing in my travels. And in a, in a nutshell, I can share with you that I wish that the American children had what the foreign students have. Opposite to that is I wish the foreign students have 
or had what the American kids have. The American kids have access, almost unlimited access. The foreign students have hunger, drive, and desire to succeed. They're hungry. And if we can combine both, I think we get higher results and better results. So the entrepreneurship camps, the Ultimate Life Summits that we run, attract students from well over 15 to 25 countries, depending on the location, because both can learn from each other. Then the next phase is making sure that our American kids travel more and look at not only Miami or New York or the city where they're from, but you're, this is just the backyard of the world. And when we talk about entrepreneurship, we better have a global conversation today because that's what's happening. So once the students that come from abroad to Miami in Doral at Hellman Worldwide Logistics at, our, at their headquarters for the Americas, we have about 50 students of which one of my challenges is getting local students to attend that particular experience. 60-70% uh, of foreign students coming to Doral uh, at Hellman uh, to experience this ultimate life entrepreneurship camp which combines the seven mindsets with entrepreneurship. Phase one. Phase two is all the follow-up, the distance learning, support, uh, motivational messages daily, case studies weekly, and then the other phase is when they start visiting each other. That yes. to me is powerful. That is powerful. And we'll talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. it after our break. Uh, please stay with us as we wrap up this conversation with uh, Mr. Juan Casimiro. Fresh thinking is being served at Miami-Dade College. Create your own recipe for success in the evolution of food culture at the Miami Culinary Institute. Learn the skills you need to jumpstart your career in the culinary arts. Turn green into gourmet and celery into salary. Miami Culinary Institute. Food. Culture. Innovation. Visit us at MiamiDadeCulinary.com. Register now. Miami Culinary Institute. Welcome back to Conversations With, and we're having a really interesting talk with Juan Casimiro, the mm -hmm. Casimiro Global Foundation, about youth entrepreneurship, about integrating mm -hmm. entrepreneurship into high school and collegiate curriculum, yes. mm -hmm. and also about global implications. Absolutely. And I know mm -hmm. my world languages faculty would not forgive me because we were just in a conversation a couple mm -hmm. of days ago mm -hmm. about the integration between studying business international business and the need to acquire mm -hmm. facility in another language Absolutely. other than English. Mm -hmm. and I, Which I think may also be an, another advantage you might see where students from around the globe come here to America, but they at least have facility in two other languages, this which is, can't yeah. help, which can't hurt you and it's almost a necessity, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a major asset. Mm -hmm. Even when I tell the students that speak English with an accent, mm -hmm you know two languages. Yes. That's a major asset, not a deficit. Absolutely. Years ago, if you had an accent, at least growing up in New York, it was kind of embarrassing because you were getting laughed at. Today, the fact that you speak two languages, uh, it's a major asset, especially when you're looking at global. I challenge students, you should be learning the third language. Yes. Uh, if you're in Miami, obviously, you're probably mastering Spanish as a second or first language. Definitely master English master business language. Yes. <laughs> you know, master, if you can, learn Portuguese. It just broadens the, you know, the opportunities. Research shows that you become even more intelligent because you're now more diverse in the learning process, so you can learn in multiple languages, hence get exposed to more vocabulary yep. and more cultural things, which is a plus. And, and the proportion that you mentioned that your programs are attracting more students from around the globe, than say students domestically, I find that to be true also. I was at a conference, a symposium on entrepreneurship at Babson mm -hmm. early part of the year. Mm -hmm. Maybe there were 75 people in attendance of which 
20 were from the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other were from Portugal, yes. different parts of the United mm -hmm, Kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, Sweden, Australia. Mm -hmm. So the resources and the that we have here in the United States, I agree, are unparalleled. Absolutely. And the rest of the world knows that. Yes. And they mm -hmm. come here mm -hmm. and to, to mm -hmm. share and learn with us. Mm -hmm. And those relationships are invaluable. Absolutely. Right? I just got back from Liberia about two, three weeks ago. And I can tell you that... Uh, they had invited me to do some empowerment combined with entrepreneurship and leadership. And it was for the Young African Leaders Program that Obama initiated. And when we say young in America, we're looking at teenagers, maybe a 21-year-old. The vast majority of the participants were in their 30s. And that to them is youth. That to them is young. For us, that would have been considered an adult and so on and so on. But I could tell you that what we are doing is for everyone, from a elementary, program, elementary school or elementary grade programs that we have all the way to corporate. And I think that the seven mindsets combined with the programs the Casimiro Global Foundation has with the seven mindsets, it, it's definitely proven to be successful. Uh, what I have discovered as an entrepreneur, if you're seeking to go into business, without the motivation, without the self-esteem, without you know you being sure of yourself, then the, obviously your risks of succeeding are going to be much more challenging because there is a lot of rejection in the process, but a very determined person doesn't look at rejection, just keeps moving forward. But that requires a certain amount of confidence, Absolutely. which is why we put a lot of emphasis on personal growth, personal development. Then let's have another conversation with the next program in this case, The Ultimate Entrepreneur, which are a series of workshops and camps that we conduct uh, throughout the world. And uh, we're looking to do more and more on the local level, both adults and youth and educators, um, parents, of course, and um, making sure that they're all speaking that language or at least understand it. Um, where there are limited jobs today, I say can't find one, create one. We're all skilled. We all capable depending on how we look at ourselves. So let's tap into those capacities and exploit them for us or be prepared to be exploited by somebody else. Sure. And, and I really believe that uh, there's a lot of great things happening with your programs at MDC and other universities and community-based organizations. And while we were speaking about this years ago, all of a sudden they figured that <laughs> this is something good. <laughs> Absolutely. So, timing is crucial. Uh, yeah, timing is everything. And, mm -hmm. and you're going to be uh, with me in a conference. Where yes. We're going to talk more yeah. about how do we grow this ecosystem. Yes. How do we invite people yeah. like you onto the campus sure, sure, to uh, engage with our students yes. about entrepreneurship yeah. in a very meaningful way? And how do we send our students out to yes. other people in our ecosystem like your Absolutely. programs so Absolutely. that they can, can they can engage even now Absolutely. as students? Yeah. It's not something that you have to wait Absolutely. until you graduate. Yeah, next week we have the Innovators of Change Forum, which brings in entrepreneurs and innovators. This year's theme is our third annual, is uh, Entrepreneurship and Innovation, a Success Strategy for Sustainability. So you've got a panel of uh, experts from diverse backgrounds. We also have a young innovator, young entrepreneur and innovator panel as well. And I can tell you that the learning that goes on over those three hours is uh, sort of like a mini course. But what's key for us is that there's also a challenge uh, in that program. We have a white paper challenge where the students from MDC and other universities who attend, we give them 30 days to submit a white paper on coming up with a solution innovatively to a problem. And, uh, you know, there's a grant for that. Uh, we're also recognizing the first recipient of the social innovator slash leadership uh, grant that we went into partnership with MDC's uh, Civic Engagement Institute with Josh uh, Young, mm -hmm. where we're recognizing a, a young lady who exhibits these type of traits. And then that means that she goes to another country in the spring or in the summer, spends about two weeks there uh, through Service for Peace, implementing these things that we're teaching her and those things that she's learned already and then has to come back and report on it. So uh, a full scholarship for that. And uh, these are the type of incentives that we uh, need to keep offering. I'm a firm believer and, and a champion and a, a big supporter of education. But entrepreneurship to me shouldn't be learned just in the classroom. You gotta go out there. Yes. You know, leadership is learned by doing. 
uh, too much emphasis on, on the theory and the business planning. And I don't want to say nonsense because it's not, it's needed, but we don't put enough emphasis on real hands-on learning. And, and I think and, and and that's what we need. And that's where this whole entrepreneurship across the curriculum, inviting the community onto the campus and us going out into the campus, creating this dynamic mm -hmm, relationship mm -hmm. yeah. starting now in classrooms, you will you will see that we'll be ushering sure. in and equipping professors and teachers with Absolutely. new tools, new strategies, Absolutely. new resources. Um, engaging with people like yourself yeah. who mm -hmm. are out in the community and who are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and can really have an yeah. impact and give our students real world experiences yeah. you know, in I, entrepreneurship. I knew it was well worth sticking to this subject because yeah. uh, 25 years ago uh, I just kept evolving, evolving, started six businesses, two didn't work out so I shut them down, two others were purchased and acquired, I have two and I have two, you know, two foundations and the key is just keep going. Uh, I, I need to share about the entrepreneurship at the university levels. 70% of university professors never ran a business, but yet they're teaching or trying to teach entrepreneurship. That's what makes Babson different, that their professors of entrepreneurship are entrepreneurs. And we need more of that. We need to bring in entrepreneurs into the classroom to speak from experience not from theory. <laughs> I think that's a great note to end on and we have a a very rich relationship with Babson mm -hmm. and they are very much collaborators yes. with us in mm -hmm. our work that we're doing on entrepreneurship great. in the college and community college in particular are the most nimble of yes, yes. institutions of higher education Absolutely. and I know we're going to see uh, as I told you before we started the show uh, our best work is ahead of great. us. Great. So thank you Juan. So I so hear. appreciate so reconnecting <laughs> with you. you. I really enjoyed talking yes, with you. Yes. I hope you also enjoyed the conversation as well and you'll look forward to more um, showings of conversations with where I bring other engaging and interesting uh, entrepreneurs here to the show to talk with you and share their insights. Thank you for being with us today. We really appreciate it.